Hey everybody, Big Mike here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're like me, you spend a lot of time shopping on bargain sites. And if you play games on your phone, you can't go five minutes without seeing advertisements for a site called Timu. Well, that got me thinking. Let's start a new series of videos called Bargain or Bull. It's late at night, you've just spent eight hours or nine hours at work, you're coming out to the parking lot, which looks kind of like this. Because you were the one that had to close the shop that day. Maybe it's dark, maybe it's rainy like it is today, maybe it's snowing if you're up there in the north. The point is, it's miserable out. And you notice something doesn't seem quite right about your vehicle as you approach it. You come around the driver's side, and then you find this. Or you're driving down a rural road, and the tire has slowly been letting out air during the drive, and all of a sudden you hear that womp, 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 womp that tells you that you have a flat tire. You pull over, and sure enough, there's your tire, flat as a pancake, on the side of the road. Do you really want to get out there and kneel in the snow and sweat in your jacket and run the risk of getting pneumonia while you're trying to put a donut on a vehicle and... Maybe you're not strong enough or you don't know how. A lot of people don't know how to change a flat tire nowadays. So you do what everybody else does. You call roadside assistance. And then you can sit from two to five hours on the side of the road with a flat tire, waiting for that vehicle to come and help you. Or you could try and re-inflate that tire. The compressor we're going to be testing is manufactured by a company called EAFC. I can only assume that FC means from China. It costs about twenty to thirty dollars. They offer two variations of it. One of them is a wired, the other is a wireless rechargeable. I recommend going with rechargeable at any given time. Just gives you a little bit more freedom. Now, according to the page, this can be used to refill sports equipment, vehicles, bicycles, motorcycles. And when you receive the package, they do give you a nice kit. You've got the actual compressor. You have a charging cable that's about three feet long and it has a red and green LED on the charger so you know when it's charging. And the green light comes on when it's fully charged. It has a liquid crystal display on the head and it's a three button operation. You have a reset button, a plus and a minus to help set the desired pounds per square inch on whatever it is you're filling up. Plus, you have a bunch of connectors for the nozzle so that you can use it on basketballs, footballs, floaties, bicycle tires, pretty much anything. But for 30 bucks, how good can this really be? Now, according to the manufacturer, they say that you select your required pressure, hook it up, pull the trigger, and then forget it, and it'll automatically shut off. Well, fortunately for you, and unfortunately for me, we've got the perfect way to test it. Right. This past weekend, I had four brand new tires installed on my truck, and three days later, I came out to this. So, let's hook this thing up and see how well it works. And now we go inside. To keep things in context, the size of the tire we just filled is a 265-70 R17 full-size GM truck tire. Tire was brand new. 
It took about 13 minutes for it to fill up that tire to 34 PSI, and that used about a third of the total battery power in our little compressor. Now I went around and then also topped off the remaining three tires and still had plenty of power left in this thing for anything that might come up next. But you know what? I'm one of those people that trust but verify. So I grabbed my little tire pressure gauge, went around to all four tires, checked the pressure after about an hour, and it was within one or two pounds of the 34 PSI that this thing was dialed into. So, assuming that I have no slow leaks on my brand new tires, this thing fills up to the required PSI within a pound or two. That's not too shabby for under $30. But you know what? I don't really think we've put this through the ringer enough to say whether this is a bargain or not. So, we need to think of something else that will really kind of test this thing to its limit. I wonder if there's something out there that we can use to just really put the stress on this thing. Okay, full disclosure, don't just sneak over to a neighbor's house and start messing with their stuff to test your theories and film a video. I did get permission from my neighbor's wife to be able to come over and do this. This is a full-sized off-road tire on a Jeep Liberty. So we're going to see how well this little bad boy does against this. Now, prior to the test, I did fully recharge this because I wanted to gauge how much battery power it's going to take to fill up this full-sized off-road tire to 34 PSI. So, we're going to hook it up, dial it in, and let her go. All right, one of the great things about shooting a video on the fly is that you can take advantage of any opportunities that pop up around you. One of the negatives is that you don't get a chance to do all the research you should do prior to shooting. While I was filling that tire, I kind of did some research and realized that 34 PSI is close to the max for a 33 by 12.50 15 inch off-road mud wheel. So, I stopped it at 17. Now, it took approximately 20 minutes for it to get to 17 PSI, which again is not bad. I verified it with my gauge and discovered that again, it took about a third of the battery power to get this heavier duty tire up to 17 PSI. So, it can handle the heavy duty tires, like the mud tires on a Jeep. It can handle full size tires on a full size GM truck. So there's no reason why it can't handle an average sedan. And if you're only going to use a third of the battery power to completely refill a completely flat tire, that's not too shabby. So, is it a bargain or is it bull****? We've tried this on a full-size GM truck with a completely flat tire. We've tried this on a heavy-duty 33-inch off-road mud tire on a Jeep. And prior to shooting this video, I actually took this thing around all my vehicles and topped all of them off just to verify that the auto shutoff feature worked. And it performed very well in all of these situations. So, 
Well, let me give you three things that I like about this little compressor and three things that eh, I'm not too thrilled about. The first thing I like about this compressor is the fact that it's not feather light. The plastic is actually pretty sturdy and it's pretty rugged and it can take some abuse. The second thing I like is the three button operation. It doesn't require much of a learning curve to learn how to get this to work and use it properly, even with translated Chinese instructions. The third thing I like is the fact that the batteries are pretty good quality. They hold a charge for an extended period of time. When I started shooting the video filling up the truck tire, this thing had been sitting for about a month in the back of my truck and had not been charged. And it still had a full battery. So that was impressive. Now, of course, with everything, there are things that I don't like. So here are three things that I don't like about this compressor. Number one, the LCD display. I think this could be a little bit bigger and I think it could have been put someplace else on this thing so you didn't have to get up close to see what the progress was while it was in operation. Number two, the actual length of the fill hose. I think this should be about another foot longer. That way, no matter where your valve stem winds up when you get a flat tire, you can set this on the ground and connect it with ease and not worry about having to stand there and hold it for 20 minutes while it fills the tire. And that brings me to the third thing. The stability of this thing on the ground, if you lay it flat, you're fine. So if the valve stem is up high, you can put it on top of the tire, provided there's room. If it's low, you can set it on the ground. But it's not really stable. Even with the battery all being inside the handle here, it's still very top heavy and can fall over. And we saw that in the actual test. I think the base could have been manufactured a little wider to offset the height so that it actually sat more stably on the ground during the process of filling the tire. Because as this thing vibrates, it has a tendency to flop over. So those are three things that I like and three things that I don't like about this little compressor. So after all that, is this a bargain or not? Well, let's use our three main criteria to determine that. Number one, ease of use. Is this easy to use? And the answer is yes. The three button controls plus the lever pinch connector on the end of the hose makes this very easy to use so that one wins. Versatility. How versatile is it? Well, with the kit that you get and the myriad of connectors that go into this nozzle, you can use this on cars, trucks, vans, heavy-duty vehicles, and sports equipment, floaties, air mattresses, you name it. So definitely wins in the versatility category. Economy. Well, I think we can agree that that's a no-brainer. For under $30, you're getting a compressor that holds a charge, does the job, does it well, and can fit conveniently in your trunk or your back seat. So I definitely think we can call this a bargain, despite some of the shortcomings I pointed out earlier. Well, that's going to do it for us here on this product review. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Big Mike. And we'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.
worked itself. Lube, lube, uh, in our situation, be sure to the uh, baby, not will be baby. Hanging out with the granddaughter, I started talking baby. Jesus. Before you get a roadside assistance vehicle. Description page here says that this vehicle. Wow, I cannot talk today. I am all about making it work. Besides, my granddaughter's coming over and I got shit to do.